Nothing is color accurate. Let me explain. So let's say you want to shoot a simple scene. The first step to getting accurate colors would be to white balance your camera. You want to white balance your camera to the Kelvin temperature of the light that you are using. If you're using sunlight, then it would be 5500 Kelvin. If you're using house lights or a lamp, probably it's going to be close to 3200 Kelvin. Now one of the main problems is that many of your consumer lights have low CRI ratings. What is CRI? Color Rendering Index. And it basically means how color accurate your light is. Most household lights have a CRI of 80, which isn't bad but also isn't perfectly color accurate. Most likely, they have a small purple or green tint in the colors. This is why many filmmakers will prefer video lights. That's because those are known to have a good CRI rating. Although none of them are going to reach a rating of 100%, because that's basically impossible, most of them will reach a rating of 95 plus CRI, which is good enough to start grading. Okay, so let's say you set your white balance and you have a high CRI light. Now what? Well, even if your light is perfectly white, it might bounce off of a surface and give it different colors. A common scenario is on wood. If you light something with a wood-like surface, then the surface will bounce back orange light. An easy way to explain this is by using a 5-in-1 reflector. If I bounce off white, then it will emit white light, but if I bounce off of the gold section, then it emits gold lights. So if you're in a room with many colors, then the light might bounce off of different colors, giving you different colors to correct. Okay, so let's say I did my white balance, I have a 95 plus CRI light, and I have a white background. Now what? Well, most likely the colors of your camera is inaccurate. Different cameras will emit different colors. Even if I set three different cameras with the same settings, all in Rec. 709 and 5500 Kelvin, they will all show a different image. Some will be more green, some more purple, some will be more contrasty, some will be more faded. The idea is that knowing which one is right is kind of hard because they kind of all look right. Now luckily for us, there is a thing called a color checker. That checker corrects your colors to get the most accurate colors you can possibly get from a useful reference color like red, green and blue from the RGB pixel and white for the perfect white balance. Okay, so let's say I did my white balance, I have a 95 plus CRI lighting, I have a white background that doesn't bounce random colors, I use a color checker to make sure my colors are as accurate as possible, now what? Well, your monitor might be a problem as well. Because even if you have the most color accurate image, your monitor might not be calibrated right and will still show off the wrong colors. And even if you did have a color accurate monitor, then most viewers of your video will still have a different screen with different colors and it won't show your hard work. And even if everybody had a perfectly color accurate monitor, would it even matter? And actually no, it wouldn't. Because after the color correction phase is the color grading phase, and in grading, nothing has to be true to life or color accurate. In color grading, it's more about the appeal of the color and less about the accuracy of it. So now the question is, why would someone want color accurate footage? And color accuracy is mostly used during the color correction phase. If you start off with accurate colors, then it becomes much easier to grade it later on. Because at the end of the day, nobody asked for the most true-to-life footage. All they wanted was something that was pleasing to the eyes. So, no, nothing is color accurate, but then again, no one said we needed accurate colors.